Well, it's too hot to work on the boat, but I've got air conditioning in the truck, so went and picked up a couple of boats. This is a 1990, 1997, I think it is, a Hobie Holder or Hobie, Hobie 1, a Hobie Holder 14. Well, I was kind of tickled to be able to pick up another one of these. I hadn't had one in a, a year or so, and, I, and uh, they, uh, they're, they're really nice little day sailors. So this will be a fun boat now when it's hot like it is now to be able to take to the lake and get wet. Show you what I'm working on here this morning. I've already taken my razor knife here and been kind of gouging out to see how bad I've got here. It's a little bit worse than I thought it was going to be. But um, I think they got up against a concrete something or another I'm not sure but uh, I've uh, all this was all this was still in place but I could tell that it had broken the bond between the layers so I've just been taking my razor knife here and, and peeling out uh, that's getting pretty thin in here so I'm gonna have to build it back up with some 17 or eight or something and uh, I'll have to grind it back up here a bit and uh, grind it back past that crack. You see where we're right there, where it cracked the shell coat right there. That's that's a structural crack right there. So I'm gonna have to grind that back, uh, you know, to where I can bond in a, a, a couple of layers of 1708 there and get it back into some good glass there. Oh, that's bad. So on all the way back to there. So I've got a two, two and a half feet long stretch there I've got to patch up. So I've got to do some grinding this morning and it's upside down. So I'm not looking forward to it, but this is on the Hobie holder, Hobie one. And it's a nice boat, except for this spot here where it got bumped hard. If I can get this taken care of, it's not leaking by the way, the, the owner, the previous owner was, it, they were actually actively sailing it and it wasn't taking on water. But it's, uh, but it is structural enough to where I've got to do something with it. I can't just ignore it. It's not a terrible thing to have to fix, but it's that kind of aggravating. It'd be easier if I take the boat off the trailer and flip it upside down. It'd be a lot easier, and I may end up doing that. It's, um, it's going to be kind of awkward fixing it the way I'm trying to do it here. I think I actually may lift the boat and flip it, and set it back down on the trailer on something, and see what I can do with it. Well, I was able to back my trailer up against this other trailer here and just lift one end up and get it rested on the bunk there and then, and then just slip it and slide it across off of this trailer up uphill, but across those uh, bunks on that trailer. And uh, I'm gonna flip it, but I might have some help to flip it, but the boat's a little bit too wide to try to flip it by myself. So I got my son-in-laws to help me flip this boat over just to make it easier now, it's right here where I can get to it. Cause I'm gonna have to do some pretty heavy grinding on this to get it back to where I can repair it here. Uh, unfortunate, but uh, uh, a good a good bit of the glass got uh, um, delaminated, I guess you'd say from some of that inner, inner layers. And I've got to grind all this back from here all the way up to, to here, and back in here and back into here where I can rebuild that radius there. That staining up there is just where the boat had been left in the water some and it uh, got the, the clay and the tannin stains from the freshwater lake up at uh, Car Lake, Car Lake. Anyway, it's uh, 95 degrees, so another hot, dry day. But I wanted to try to get this ground down and cleaned up and maybe at least get something on here to kind of uh, seal it up. But I may not get any glass work done today, but I'm going to try to at least get it ground down and cleaned and then I'll throw a tarp over it for the night because it'll be out in the dew in the morning. This is a Hobie 1, which is the same as a Hobie Holder 14. It's just a little bit newer model and they called, started calling it a Hobie 1. And this is one that's got the drop centerboard in it. 
it's a nice boat other than you know, just that, that bad spot there and like i said it wasn't taking on water it wasn't leaking uh they were actively using the boat and, uh, and didn't have any water in it when i got it uh at all but um that's just you know obviously it's got to be repaired still got a little bit to have to pick out up here but you got to hold a Got a hold of something pretty good. Well, I had to get really aggressive with this to get down to something I can work with here. It was worse shape than I thought it was going to be. It was, uh, you know, all the way through, but it had it had delaminated the laminates. It was a pretty dry layup. It looked like. And so everything pretty much had separated in that, right down that, that uh, chine there where it would have been uh, hit. So I've had to carry it all the way down through. I'm down to the, to the very inside layer of cloth here. Um, and I've just left that in place as best I could, just kind of as a form, of, I guess you could say, to, to build back up on. So I'll probably end up having to use a minimum of three layers, probably a 1708. Uh, right down that chine to get that built back and then and then taper it back out you know to two and then to one i may have to carry it back a little bit further as well to blend it in good it's really hot like i said 95 96 degrees and i'm right out in the hot sunshine but uh, i want to at least get one layer across it uh, before i quit just kind of tie it all back together a bit but like i said it's a little bit worse than i thought it was going to be the, you know, at first, you know, it almost looked like, you know, I almost could just fix that with some thickened gel coat. But then the more I started digging into it, the more I realized that it had separated, you know, the layers of cloth. The, the bond had been broken. And whenever it's like that, you've you got to grind it back. You don't really have a choice. You've got to cut it back until you get back to good good glass. And so that's what I've done. I'm I'm back to, to good, good stuff on the ends for about four or five inches on either end, about six inches down there and about four inches down here. Um, and then, you know, I'm up where you seen the, the kind of the greenish hue, that that was uh, like a filler, I think, or so, or maybe a uh, some micro balloons or something that they put in it. Um, so from that point beyond that, you know, and then below down here, it's all good. It's just right down that chine that was broken so bad. So, but it's way too nice of a boat not to take the time to fix it. So I'm gonna try to fix it up. Got my battery died on my GoPro. <clears throat> I got three uh, layers of 1708 biaxial and epoxy resin <clears throat> applied to this thing. And the last layer I ran a different direction, so it's in pieces running that direction. The other two are running lengthwise. And I hope that'll be a, a, a plenty good strength there. That's, uh, that's at least as thick as the hole was to start with. And this is solid uh, where the uh, original had, like I say, the micro balloons or something in it, kind of a, 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 a real thin coring material or something. Anyway, I, I feel pretty good about it. And it's bonded to the inside last layer and then tapered out into everything else. So I think it'll be fine. <clears throat> I mixed up a little bit of uh, colloidal silica and a little bit of epoxy resin and kind of skimmed over just to, to help me out as far as uh, my first go round of uh, fairing compound. Uh, that'll add a little bit, little bit of strength to it as well as, you know, fairing in some of the places, like for example, you know, where my layers lapped and uh, starting to, started to um, start uh, kicking just a little bit. So I had to quit messing with it, but I think it's gonna be all right. I'll give that some uh, heavy cleaning to get all the wax off of it and and then i'll give it a, a good heavy rough sanding tomorrow probably in the morning and then i'll look and see what i need to do as far as fairing is concerned and i'll probably use total boat total fair you know to fair it out for the final deal so yeah i can see one shallow place down there just a little bit so it's going to need just a little bit of fairing to get this to get that uh, chine shape back and and i'll you know just to smooth it back out but it's not bad uh no i said that was a lot worse than i thought it was going to be 
uh, 100% definitely structural. It'll be all right. Now where it uh, lapped over onto my gel coat, all that actually gets ground off. I just wet it out and let it run on wild and that's fine. Whenever I sand it, that'll sand right off flush with the gel coat and uh, all, all that, that corner up here and in here and uh, that little bit around there, that all cut, that'll all get sanded off. And the edges too, they'll get sanded off, you know, tapered down to the gel coat all the way around. Uh, washed it down really good with the soapy, warm soapy water with some Dawn detergent. And then I came back and rinsed it really good with some fresh water to get rid of as much of the soap as I could and the wax. And now I'm just gonna hit it with this little uh, uh, sander here with some uh, 40 grit in it to start with, just to quickly hit off some of the high spots. Okay, I got it sanded and got the dust rinsed off of it. It's not perfect, but it's I think it's close enough now to where I can just use fairing compound and, and finish it out. Got it, you know, blended down to the low side of the gel coat on all the edges, and it's pretty close. I still may have somewhere that's too high, but I kind of need to skim coat it with some fairing compound uh, with a wide board to kind of get a better sense of what I got and then go again. Most of the time you end up having to put fairing compound at least a couple of times on something like this, maybe even three times. But it's getting close, it's getting close. I'll have, I'll have a bit of a depression uh, next to the gel coat all the way around intentionally. That's where I can use the fairing compound and, and uh, you know, level it out and leave a, hopefully leave a little bit of room for gel coat. And when I do the gel coat, there's scratches all in here. Um, this part of this whole issue here, there's scratches all in here. It looks kind of like a dark spot right in there. Those are scratches. So I'll end up gel coating it, you know, way down here and blend it in. So uh, I'll do that, sand it out. And if it don't look real good, pretty good when I get through, I'll just plan on, you know, painting the whole, the whole bottom of the boat. Just, uh, just paint it and be done with it. But I'm gonna put the gel coat on it over barrier paint first and just kind of uh, get everything blended in as best I can with that. And like I said, if the colors don't match, then I'll just paint it. Fix and mix up some total boat, total fare to uh, try to put a little bit of fairing compound on that this morning. We'll just mix it up on a piece of throwaway foam board there. Fifty mix and you just mix it up until it turns kind of a greenish color with no uh, blues or yellows in it. Probably gonna be a good enough mix. This will most likely take at least a couple of uh, different passes of filler to, to get it good. Yeah, I'm probably just not even gonna try to get it crazy, crazy, crazy good. I'm gonna just uh, hit it here and then move on with it. Now 
Now, when I sand this out, I'll have to use like a long board to, uh, to be able to um, do what I'm trying to do here. Well, I came out a couple hours after I put this on yesterday and took my razor knife and trimmed off that ridge line there a bit while it was still a little, little bit on the soft side, you know, just kind of rubbery and trimmed off a bunch. So I wouldn't have quite so much to sand. And now I'm just gonna use a little sanding pad here, a long sanding pad here and start shaping it up. This is a 120 grit, I believe. Well, just started sanding up here. The dark green areas are the low points. The light green areas are, are the high sanded points. And then these areas here is where I've, I've already sanded through the filler, you know, down to my glass, which is, which is fine. Um, but uh, I need to either sand a little bit or either add just a tiny bit of filler in these low spaces. And to be honest with you, they just started sanding and it's fixing to, fixing to start raining. It's uh, coming up a cloud here, so I've got to quit. But uh, I think a little more sanding is going to solve the majority of the situation. It's actually looking pretty good as far as being level and fair already. But uh, that was just with just a just a few minutes of sanding with that long board. So that actually might get lucky and that might be enough filler, but I may have to add a little in a couple of places. place right here it looks like it needs filler but when I look down at that chine I actually need to lower that china tuck right there so it may sand out and still be pretty fair because right now I've got just a little bit of a high spot right here in the chine but it's mostly has sanded out I got a couple little places that up right like right here I'm gonna probably have to work on a little bit with a little bit more but most of it's going to be good. This uh, sanding block I'm using here, it's just a belt sander uh, sanding uh, pad with a board in it. So it's just like you'd use on your belt sander. And I just, like I say, stick a board in it. It makes it very convenient. Uh, small uh, long board. Okay, that's my second coat of uh, fairing compound sanded out, and I think that's going to be good. I just rinsed it off with water hose to get all that dust off of it, but that's, uh, that's I think, is where I'm going to leave it. And uh, I will uh, run up the cloud again, fixing the rain. But I will uh, give that a good cleaning and put... Uh, at least one, probably two coats of barrier paint on it. Probably two coats of barrier paint on it. And uh, in preparation for getting some gel coat on it. I got it all finished up, sanded out like I want it. Taped off and getting ready to put some barrier paint on it. I mixed up a little bit of a West Systems epoxy with their barrier additive in it. That's what I got here. 
I put just a little bit more additive in it than it calls for. Uh, not much more, but just a touch more. I'm getting ready to put that on there. First coat of barrier paint. I think I'm gonna put a second coat on it, but that's all will I will put on it is too. That is usually more than adequate to be a, I use it kind of like a, a um, what, what do you call it? A, a tie coat, I guess you would call it, between the uh, epoxy uh, resin materials and the uh, um, polyester gel coat. I've got my first coat of uh, barrier paint uh, sanded out. Or actually, first of all, I, I cleaned it good with soapy, warm soapy water to get the uh, blush off of it. And then I have sanded it out with some 220 paper and I've feather edged the, the edge down, you know, down to a feather edge into the gel coat. And now I've got it taped off for my second coat, which will be my final coat for this of barrier paint. And I've held my tape back about three sixteenths of an inch all the way around. And then my second coat will, you know, lap that first coat down that three sixteenths inch or so. I got the second coat on. I was able to go ahead and pull the tape off around that upper edge, you know, because gravity's pulling it all this way. So I don't have to worry about drips up there. But on the bottom here, I'm going to have to wait a little while before I pull that tape because of uh, gravity's, you know, pulling it down. So I'm a little bit of a, a little bit of a run on that bottom edge. But that uh, should tack up in very quickly. Bright sunshine and the hull is hot, so it should. It's looking pretty good. Stuff levels out pretty nicely. Kind of hard to show on, on the camera, but it, it blends in. Blends in really well. And I've got the gel coat sanded back, like say an inch and a half or so, where I can tie the gel coat back in. And hopefully have a, a nice, clean, smooth transition, I hope. I'm using my trusty little mechanic scraper and I'm taking the blade here and just very carefully pulling that, uh, that little drip line there away and then just wiping out on paper towel. Just trying to collect that little bit that's trying to run there. It's, it's almost starting to tack. It doesn't take long on a day like today. So I just need to clean that line up right there just a little bit and then it shouldn't really run enough to hurt anything after that. So this has uh, dried to touch but it's still um, a little bit soft and rubbery and what I do on this uh, bottom edge here where it has beaded just a little bit to keep from having to sand so much um, I come back with my um, handy little uh, mechanic scraper and just very carefully um, lift off that little lip like that right there and, and I don't have to, I don't have to do nearly as much sanding there now.